Gospel Hour, making known to this nation the gospel of Jesus Christ. Stay tuned for today's message that was preached and recorded by the founder of the Gospel Hour, Evangelist Dr. Oliver B. Green. And now, here with our message, Oliver B. Green. Speak to my heart, O God, and speak through these lips of clay, those who wait in the great unseen Gospel Hour congregation. I commit myself, soul, spirit, and body. I surrender all. Help me, teach me, lead me. And God forbid that I say one word that ought not be said. God help me to say every word I ought to say in Jesus' name. He's worthy. Amen. Now, in Revelation, and and I've been giving you for several days, we've been discussing the tribulation period, and I said, and I gave you scriptures, and of course, uh, you couldn't get them all, but I gave you many scriptures. The tribulation is a time of judgment, indignation, destruction, darkness, punishment, overturning, and a time of uh, extreme darkness and misery. Now, I gave you all of those scriptures. Now, of course, I realize that many of you did not get them all, but I'm sure you got some of them. Now, today, I'm going to the book of Revelation. This is the revelation that God gave John the Beloved on the Isle of Patmos, and the messenger said to John, Write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, the things which shall be hereafter. Now, that verse of Scripture to me is clear as crystal. He said, write, John, you write things which thou hast seen. Write down what you have seen. So he did. The first 18 verses contain what he saw. Now then, he said, write the things which are, and he did. Chapters 2 and 3 give us the history of the church on earth in advance. God writes history in advance. Man writes it after it happens. God uh, writes in advance what is going to happen. Man writes it after it happens. Write the things which thou hast seen, he did. Write the things which are, he did. And write the things which shall be hereafter. Now then, so John began to write, and we have in chapter 2 and 3, the message to seven churches, and these churches were located in Asia Minor. They, they, they were there. They were literal churches, but the message goes deeper and the message is much broader than the message to the local assembly at Ephesus and Smyrna and Pergamos and Thyatira and Sardius and Philadelphia and Laodicea. Now those, those churches actually existed in Asia Minor, but this chapter two and three, these chapters go beyond the churches there. We read in the third chapter, beginning in verse 7, the message to the church at Philadelphia, the church of brotherly love. And he said, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door. And that was true. The, the church has had an open door. And no man can shut it, for thou hast little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Now, there has always been, and there will be until the rapture, a people who keep the word, believe the word, preach the word, live with the word, stand by the word, and die by the word. They have been since Pentecost, and there will be people uh, that do that until the the rapture. So he said in verse 10, because I have kept the word of my patience, I'll keep thee from the hour of temptation which shall come upon all, A-double-L, all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, hold fast that which thou hast. No man take thy crown. Now that's the message to Philadelphia. Then the message to Laodicea, the lukewarm church, neither hot nor cold. And because you are neither hot nor cold, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now in the 20th verse of this chapter, we find I, Jesus standing at the door. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Now that's the church door. Now I do not object. I have myself referred to the door of the heart. Jesus standing at the heart uh, knocking. I, I've said that in sermons, and I, there's nothing wrong with it. But this verse of Scripture does not speak of the human heart. Behold, I stand at the door, the church door, and knock. 
If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. Now then, in the Laodicean church, uh, the, the, there will not be one born again, blood washed, redeemed child of God. Now I'm not judging, but there are assemblies, local assemblies today. I believe on earth today, I believe there are local churches that are strictly liberal, and I'm not talking about any particular denomination. I have no particular church in mind. But I'm sure there are churches on earth today where there's not a born-again person, including the preacher. And when the rapture occurs, there won't be one person taken out of those churches. Now, I believe we're living right now, today, in Revelation chapter 3, between verses 7 and uh, the last verse, 22. I believe we're right there. We have the church of Philadelphia, the brotherly love church, the Bible-keeping church, the Word of God-keeping church. We have the people here today, and we have the lukewarm church, neither hot nor cold, happy-go-lucky. And I said uh, on a few uh, 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 a previous broadcast, I said that religion and church membership is very popular. One of the most popular things you can do today is join a church, join a church, get religion, join a church. And some of the outstanding people of the world today that participate in everything the world does are great church members, and they give their great testimonies at great conventions and great meetings, and they stand up and tell what a great salvation they have, and then go back to the world, to the gutter, and back to the things that are ungodly. The Bible says, the word of God, the scriptures say, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Come ye out from among them. If you love the world, the love of God's not in you. Now that's clear. That's very clear. So one can put on a very, very religious front. And seemingly that person is real dedicated to the, to the cause of Christ. And then uh, the very next day or even the same day, participate in something that is just as ungodly and just as worldly as can be. Now that's the Laodicean spirit, neither cold, neither hot, lukewarm. And Jesus said, I'll spew you out. Now listen, John was commanded to write what he had seen, what was going on then. And this John wrote sometime uh, between 90 and 100 A.D., uh, sometime at the very close of the first century after Christ. And so the church certainly was here. And he wrote, he pinned down the church, the history of the church in advance. Now listen, in chapter 4 of Revelation, as clear as can be, after this I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. After this, after what? After the Laodicean church. That is, the, uh, the, the true church is caught out and the lukewarm church is spewed out. The church at Philadelphia is taken up in the clouds to meet Jesus in the air and the Laodiceans are left on the earth. After this, after the church, after the church runs its course. Now, when the church is complete, and I don't know when that will be, no man knows, when the body of Christ is complete, Jesus will come for his bride, for his church. He purchased the church with his own blood. And he loved the church. He died for the church, Paul tells us in Ephesians. Now, after this, I looked and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice, which I heard was, as it were, a trumpet. Now, what did Paul say? He said Jesus would descend from heaven to shout the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God, the trumpet of God. And John heard a voice like a trumpet talking with me, which said, come up hither and I will show thee things which should be, which must be hereafter. And immediately I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven and one sat on the throne and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardian stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight like unto an emerald. Now there in verses one, two, three, of Revelation 4, we have a picture and John experienced in the spirit the rapture of the church. He experienced spiritually what we will experience literally. I say what we will, even if I die and my body goes back to dust 
My body will be raised and my spirit will unite with my glorified body in the rapture. And so will every believer. Every believer that's died, the body has gone back to dust. The spirit has gone to Jesus and is resting in paradise. And when the rapture occurs, God will bring the spirits of the righteous with him in the air. The bodies will be raised and they'll be, they'll unite with the glorified, the, the spirit of the redeemed will unite with the glorified body. And the living saints will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, and together we'll all be caught up to meet Jesus in the clouds. Do you believe that literally, Mr. Green? I believe that literally. I believe it literally. I don't preach anything I don't believe. I preach everything I believe, and I don't preach anything that I don't believe. Don't you ever think that I would be so guilty and such a first-class hypocrite as to preach something that I didn't believe? One day Jesus will descend up here above us, And there will be a shout. There will be the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God will sound. The dead in Christ will be raised and the living saints will be changed. And then together we'll be instantly removed from this earth in the twinkling of an eye. And we'll be caught up in the clouds with Jesus. And we'll be there with him in the clouds up there at the marriage supper and with him in the air for about seven years. And then we'll return to this earth with him at the end of the tribulation period to put down the Antichrist and the armies of the Antichrist. Now then, the door is open. Jesus is the door. The door is open in heaven. The voice is like a trumpet. And the voice said, come up. Come up hither and I'll show thee things which must be hereafter. That is, After the Philadelphia church is taken out and the Laodicean church is spewed out. Now, I could spend the rest of this broadcast discussing the elders, which represent the church, and uh, the seven seal book, and that's in chapter 5, and that book has seven seals on it. And in that book, the terms are recorded The terms of redeeming the earth. Now, you wait a minute. You wait just a minute. God did not create this earth to be a place of scars and thorns and thistles. In the Listen, God created this earth to be one giant garden of Eden. And that's what it would have been if Adam had not sinned. This earth today would be one gigantic garden of Eden. But Adam sinned. And the whole creation is groaning in in Romans 8. In Romans 8, you'll find the whole creation is groaning and travailing in pain right now, waiting, waiting for the rapture, waiting. Now, I tell you what, that is so important. I'm going to turn and read it because I'm afraid some of you will say, why didn't Brother Green read that? If it's in there, why didn't you read it? All right, I'll take the time. I don't have it marked. I usually put a paper clip in my Bible where I'm going to read. And so here it is. I'll read it. And now listen. The creature itself was, well, let me see now. The creature was made subject to vanity. This is Romans 8.20. Romans 8.20. Paul said the creature, not men, but creatures, were made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. Listen, everything will be delivered. The whole creation. Now, in the Garden of Eden, the trees and the flowers did not have any thorns or thistles. Uh, The roses did not have any thorns. You say, Brother Green, do you believe there were roses in the garden? Well, everything beautiful to look at and everything good to eat was there. Everything. Now then, the whole creation is groaning. Now, wait just a minute. Be delivered. Uh, Verse 22 now. Verse 22, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and not only they, but ourselves, also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even ourselves, grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. The redemption of our body. Now, the Spirit is redeemed now, but the body will be redeemed when Jesus comes in the first resurrection, and that is the rapture. The rapture and the first resurrection occur at the same time. So, the whole creation, the trees, The shrubs, the flowers, the birds. Do you you believe there'll be birds in the new earth, preacher? I certainly do. I certainly do. Do you believe there'll be animals in the new earth? I don't believe it. I know it. 
We read in Isaiah, the lamb and the lion and the bear will eat together. A little child will lead a bear and a lion and a tiger, a child will. And the snakes will not be poisonous anymore. There will, yes, the new earth will be as the Garden of Eden was. The whole new earth will be as the Garden of Eden was before Adam sinned. Certainly, indeed, yes, I believe that. The Bible says so. Why shouldn't I believe it? It's in the Word of God. Now then, the whole creation is groaning, waiting for the adoption to, to wit the redemption of our bodies. And so that will occur when the rapture takes place. Everything. There'll be no thunder. There'll be no lightning. There'll be no rain. There'll be no thorns. There'll be no uh, thistles. Uh, there will be no poisonous snakes, spiders. No, sir. Everything, the, the whole creation, every created thing will be delivered from the curse. And we'll have a glorious new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Now then, this seven seal book, chapter five, tells what it will, what the redemption price is. Now in chapter six, and this of course is immediately, that is, uh, we read about the elders and so forth, and uh, the Antichrist rides out. Now when the church is taken out, can you imagine, now listen, I realize that the majority, and I say this with sadness, not joy, you know as well as I do that the mass of mankind does not love God, does not worship Jesus, and does not go to church, and, and does not worship and read the Bible and pray. Now, uh, there are many, many dear Christians in America, and I suppose America has more real Christianity than all the rest of the world combined, I suppose. But in some countries, such as Russia and China, there are very few Christians, and uh, there are Christians, yes, indeed, there are born-again Christians, I suppose, in every nation, on every continent, certainly. But the mass, the millions of men on earth today do not love God and do not worship God. Now, when the rapture of the church occurs, that will, that'll be a time of confusion, and men will wonder what on earth has happened. And then it is that the Antichrist, the superhuman, the devil in flesh, the son of the devil, the son of perdition, the king of fierce countenance, the man of sin, will ride out on a beautiful white horse and announce that he's God Almighty and offer peace on earth and goodwill toward men. And when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes. Now, when it says sudden, it doesn't mean in a second. Now, the first three and a half years of the reign of the Antichrist will be a time of peace. And then he will break his covenant with Israel. He'll be in Jerusalem. He'll sit in the temple in Jerusalem. And he'll reign from Jerusalem. And he'll reign over Israel and, of course, over the whole world, for that matter. And when he has been reigning three and a half years, he'll break every promise. He'll break the covenant. And this earth will become a literal hell. And it'll be a time, the last half of the tribulation will be a time of suffering such as man has never known. Now, the Antichrist rides out. And then he, as I said, he gives peace for three and a half years. And then peace is taken from the earth. Famine comes and death comes. And then, of course, we find beginning with verse 12, in Revelation 6, I read this the other day, and I won't read it again now because my time is running out. But in Revelation 6 and verse 12, we find that there's a great earthquake. The sixth seal is removed. There's a great earthquake, and the sun, uh, the sun became black as sackcloth. The moon became as blood. Stars fell from heaven as a fig tree uh, casteth untimely figs when shaken the mighty wind. Heaven split wide open, rolled back, and every mountain, every island was moved. Men Great men, chief captains, bondmen, all men hid themselves in the dens and the rocks and cried and screamed for the rocks and the mountains to fall on them and hide them from the face of Jesus, from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath, W-R-A-T-H, the wrath of the Lamb, not the wrath of the Antichrist, but the wrath of the Lamb for the great day of his wrath, the wrath of Jesus, the Lamb, the wrath of the Lamb is come and who shall be able to stand? Are you born again? If you're not born again, the thing you need to think about is not the rapture, but the new birth, to be born again. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your faith in him right now. He'll save you. You'll know it. Father, 
bear the message home to hearts today. God grant our Heavenly Father that every soul listening to me now who is not born again will believe on Jesus and be born again. Deepen conviction, O Lord. Draw mightily and save many. Save poor lost church members who joined the church, but they've never been saved. In Jesus' precious name we ask it. He's worthy. Amen. It's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Yes, it's mine. And the white robe angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. For there's a new name written down in glory. Sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, never more to roam. I was once a sinner, but I came, pardoned to receive from my Lord. This was freely given, and I found that He always kept His word, kept His word. There's a new name. And the white robe angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. Has come home. For there's a new name written down in glory. And it's mine. And it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. Yes, it's mine. With my sins forgiven, I am bound for heaven, evermore to roam. I was humbly kneeling. angry frown, when the heavens opened, and I saw that my name was written down, written down. There's a new name written down in glory, and it's mine, and it's mine. Oh, yes, it's mine. yes it's mine, and the white robe angels sing the story, a sinner has come home. Sins forgiven.